Good evening. Welcome to uh, Headline 21. This program is brought to you by CAN-TV and CAWC. My name is Atzimba Rodriguez and I will be your host this evening. Um, as I mentioned, this is an interactive program, which means that you can call us at any point if you call the number appearing on your screen. You can call us with any questions, concerns, or comments that you would like to share with us. Um, I am a counselor advocate at the HCIP program, which is the Hospital Interv Crisis Intervention Program at Northwestern Hospital. And I am here to talk to you about domestic violence. Uh, for the next 20 minutes, I will be sharing a story with you, um, commenting on different ways that you can use resources to help yourself or anybody that you know might be in trouble. But before we start, I would like to share our information with you. This is our 24-hour domestic violence hotline. It's the phone is 773-278-4566. Feel free to call at any point. It's a 24-hour hotline and you'll find trained staff that will be able to talk to you about domestic violence. They might be able to help you with resources or um, refer you to someone else who might be able to help you as well. So today I would like to share a story with you. I am a counselor, as I mentioned before, and I have many clients. One of the stories that I heard and that are, um, I guess, that stuck with me uh, the most is the story of, we'll call her Anna. Anna is a 43-year-old woman. She has a daughter. Her name will be Lisa for the sake of the story. Um, Anna was in a long-term relationship. She was actually married for 20 years. She had um, Lisa a couple years into her relationship once she was older. And um, Anna was or seemed to have a perfect marriage to the public eye. Um, she had a happy household. She had a beautiful house. Everything was going well for her. And then out of nowhere, one day, you know, she, the police got called to her house and it was because her husband had been drinking and he hit her, right? So as Anna tells the story first, she says that there was no type of domestic violence in her household. It was an isolated incident. Then a couple of days later, um, a big thing happens, right? Her husband is drunk again and they get into an argument Anna is welcomed to her house by punches and, you know, a, a physical altercation. So her husband is a bigger man. He grabs Anna by the throat and he just starts hitting her. Um, Anna lost conscious. Her daughter had to call the police. And once the police arrived, they took pictures of everything because the scene was so brutal. Um, Anna was left alone, but she, then she decided to go to the hospital after a while. Um, if she hadn't been taken to the hospital, Anna wouldn't be here with us, right? Anna now has permanent brain injuries as well as physical injuries. She can't walk, and as a consequence of all of this, now she has depression. Um, I tell you this story because Anna, at the beginning, did not want to share her story with anybody. She told us that it was an isolated incident, that it never had happened. She was in a coma for a year and a half. When she woke up, everything was new. Her daughter had gone to college, and she started to learn again. It was as if she was a newborn who needed to be taken care of, and her whole life was ripped away. Um, when Anna came to us, Anna told me that it had been the first time that this had never happened, that he just got drunk and maybe, you know, was drugged or under the influence of something else. Uh, but her whole life had been a happy marriage. As the time passed, Anna decided to share more about her relationship and the situation she was on. Uh, Anna shared that there were a couple incidents before, but she never really 
took them serious or did not take them as domestic abuse. So we talked to Anna and um, we let him know, we let her know that domestic violence appears in many different ways. And I will talk more in depth about this once I finish with this story. But as we inform her about the different things that domestic violence can look like, she started sharing more about the different things that would happen to her. Um, so as it turns out, she had been experiencing domestic violence for 10 years or so, and she had just been dealing with, with it because she didn't want to share it with anybody else. She felt ashamed that she was going through this. She wanted to have um, a perfect life, and she felt that if she maybe stayed quiet, things would go away, but they didn't. They just turned out into something bigger, and it got out of control. So she'll, um, as I talked to her daughter, Lisa, who started college, she shared that this incident would happen constantly, that her parents would be fighting on and off, on and off, and that they would be fine one minute, and then fighting the next minute. So for her, this was a really unstable situation. She was not happy. Her mom thought that she was staying quiet for her daughter, but Lisa knew everything that was going on, right? So she would have friends over and something would be happening. She would try to cover it and her mom would ask her to not tell anybody of what was going on. Um, if we forward a few months, now Anna, after the whole incident happened and she woke up from the coma, she had to start dealing with her whole life again, right? Um, she didn't have a home. She didn't have a family. Um, she didn't have the support of those she loved because they also thought that how could she let this whole thing happen and not turn to them. They felt as if she was hiding all of this and did not want their help. So... Anna now asked for the help of a few friends who were very helpful and gave her a place to, leave, to live. And um, she had the support of uh, counselors at Northwestern Hospital who also were there to help her and guide her with resources. And then she turned to us. Uh, we were able to help her and find uh, different resources that worked for her. So. Now that I told you a little bit about uh, Anna's story, I want to kind of go into depth with them and talk about what you can do if you find yourself in a situation similar to hers, okay? Or if someone you know is going through something similar. So the first thing is that Anna was going through all of this for 10 years without telling anybody. Why? Because she felt shame. She did not know that a lot of these incidents were considered domestic violence, and she did not know who to turn to, right? So the first thing is that if you have a question about domestic violence or you're experiencing, you think you might be experiencing domestic violence, again, I'll, you can call our 24-hour domestic violence hotline, and I'll put it for you again. This is the number, and this is our website. In our website, you'll find different resources, anywhere from counselor and advocates, um, groups. If you don't feel like you want that one-on-one, -on -one, but you want to talk to other people who might be experiencing the same thing that you're going through, they have groups. Um, they have uh, legal advocates as well. So for those, if I know the legal system can be very tricky and scary for some of us you can have a legal advocate that will go with you to court or will guide you through the process of it. So I'm gonna leave it there uh, for one more minute so you can take the information or visit our website as you watch. Um, so going back to Anna, she did not know where to turn. She did not know where to start, right? And I will say to you, if you don't know where to start, this is, this is a great resource to have. Um, you can call them, and if you're not sure if that's for you, you can always ask them about different resources, and you can go from there, okay? Um, you can go online and find different resources that might work for you as well. 
Um, if you need shelters, we do have a shelter, or we can connect you to the hotline where they can tell you about more shelters that are or beds available in the city. So another thing that was something that Anna had a problem with was not feeling like she could tell someone because they would judge her. She came from a very um, strict family with um, very strict ideas. They thought that, you know, once you got married, that was the person that you stayed with till the end and that these things just happen and were ups and downs in the relationship. Um, yeah, there are ups and downs in relationships and if you are of the belief that you need to stay with that person, you know, that's a personal belief. But it's important to differentiate between something that can be talked in a relationship and something that is causing harm to you or to anybody else in the family or the relationship. I want to mention as well that um, domestic violence can happen anywhere. It's not just a thing that happens between a couple or a significant other, right? A family member can be an abuser. A roommate can be an abuser. There are many people that can fall into this category. So going forward, moving forward with this, if you feel like you're experiencing domestic violence and you don't know how to reach out to someone else or to someone and, you know, worrying that they might not, they might not understand what you might be feeling, it's important for you to have a backup. It's important for you to have a net of uh, people who you can talk to, right? You might not want to tell them everything, but you can share a few things. And if you feel like they don't understand where you're coming from, you can always call the hotline and you will find people who are trained to listen to you, who are trained to help you find the best resources for you. Um, and for those out there who might feel like you know someone who's going through something, it's very important that you listen and you know where your capabilities stop. Right? You don't want to be always there for them and then feel like you have a saying in their relationship. Know that if a survivor is going through something, they'll go at their own pace and you can't tell them what to do or when to do it, right? Um, if a survivor stays in a relationship, that they have their own reasons why they're staying in a relationship, right? Um, the abuse can go anywhere from physical, something you can see, emotional, to economic abuse. And they might be taking all their money or isolating them from anybody else. So they might feel like they have nowhere to turn, they have no money to go anywhere, and no one to talk to. So it's very important that if someone comes to you with this information, it's very easy. You can just listen. And if you don't know what to say, you can help them find resources if that's all you can do. Just know that you won't make them do what you want and you kind of have to go with them in their own pace. So Maria stayed in this relationship. She had no family member that she felt she could talk to. She felt ashamed of this whole thing, right? And she just felt like she had to deal with. And I want to tell you that you don't have to deal with any domestic abuse, any domestic violence, or any situation that might feel that is unsafe for you. If you're in a relationship, you should always feel safe. And you should feel like you can talk. You can share what you feel and the other person would be able to understand you. Um, so, Maria went through this whole thing and one day it just happened, right? A whole incident happened. The incidents were little and they would have arguments here and there. They would just have maybe a push or two and everything would go back to normal. But one day he came in drunk and that day Maria told him she wanted to and she wanted to leave. He didn't want to and this turned out to that. So Maria was left in the hospital for a year with brain injuries that are permanent. 
and physical injuries that are permanent as well. After she woke up, she did not know where to turn, but thankfully she was in a hospital. So this is another resource that anybody can use. If you don't know where to go, if you, go to, if you don't have a home, if you don't know, you just left your house, you don't know where to go, you can always go to a police station or a hospital and they will try to help you, okay? So Maria was already there because of the whole situation. Um, and the hospital was able to connect them to us. Again, we work for HCIP. I work for HCIP, which is a hospital crisis inter intervention program. And this program is uh, counselors that are at Stroger Hospital as well as Northwestern. Um, and we are just there for anyone that might be going through domestic violence and who are at the hospital as a result of it or just for any other reason and they decide that they need help with the domestic violence. So we're there to help them. Um, Maria was able to connect with us and she had a lot of things going on. She felt like she did not know where to start. She did not know if she could ask for help because she was also, she's an immigrant and um, she did not know what to do. So at this point, she was very scared and she did not know if she could get an order of protection or if she could go through the legal process because she was scared that her status as an undocumented immigrant would be um, a problem for her. I wanna tell you that anybody can ask for an order of protection, okay? It doesn't matter if you're part of a min minority group, if you are from another country, if you don't have documents, right? That does have nothing to do. You're still a human being and if you're going to domestic violence, through domestic violence, there are systems in place to help you. So uh, by saying this, we were able to connect her with uh, 1,000 Women, which is a group uh, that helps with legal advocacy, and they were able to help her. Um, another thing that I wanna say to you is that we have legal advocates and they do not ask or care about your legal status. If you are in the process of your legal status, they might be able to help you find resources for you, okay? Um, so if you have any questions about this or would like me to answer any questions, I want to welcome you to call the number that is in your screens. The number is 312 738 one zero six zero six zero um so maria was able to get in contact with them and sh they have been working um uh, with with her and trying to find a way of helping her and getting any resources that she might be able to um they got in contact with the mexican can consulate and they are able to help her move on from this whole thing. One thing that I want all of you and uh, anybody who might be listening to this is that domestic violence goes farther than just the physical abuse or the abuse that's happening at that moment in the relationship. Many people, when they leave, they're, they are found in places with no resources, no help, no backups, and it's very difficult. It's as if you were starting from zero. A lot of the women that we help leave their houses with nothing, right? And they end up going to the shelter. They can't bring any of their personal resource, their per personal belongings. They might be able to bring a bag or two. But you are starting from the very bottom with nothing, right? Some of them might not have a job, not even an ID. So if you can imagine how that that is, how difficult it is to find a job. Now imagine not having an ID or any personal identifications, not have any experience because you weren't allowed to work in many cases, and then starting your whole life from zero. That is not only difficult, but it's traumatizing for someone, right? 
And then there are many other things that can be going on besides this. Um, Maria was found with no, no home, no place to go. And thankfully, she had friends that were there to help her. And they were there for her when she needed them the most. But many people do not have the family or the support from anybody out there. And the reason is because many of the family members or friends get tired of them. They think they're lying. They think, you know, that why don't they leave their relationship? It's easy. You just leave. It's not that simple. So if someone tells you that they're going through a situation like this, please believe them, right? Chances are that no one is going to come and tell you I'm going through domestic abuse or I'm going through domestic violence. But if someone does, believe them. And if you can't say anything, again, you can guide them through resources. You can help them go on and earn it and find some resources. I'm going to put um, the hotline number once again for anybody out there who's listening to this. This is her 24-hour domestic violence hotline. You can call at any point, and you will be fine with someone who will help you and who will be listening to you, okay? Um, I want to welcome any callers. If you have any questions before we finish this program, if you don't have any questions right now or at, at, at this point, but you will like... Um, to know more about what we do, uh, you can always visit our website. It's cawc.org. You will be able to find resources there. You can um, find our phone number again and get in contact with any of us. We have counselors. We have um, a shelter. We have groups, and we have different locations where we can assist you. If we can't assist you for any reason or you might need different help from what we can provide provide to you we can always uh, find resources for you or refer you to someone that can better help you please don't feel like there are nowhere or there are no places to help you um, there are different groups and different organizations that are here to help you you are not alone. If you know someone who might be going through this, you can always do something as simple as giving them a phone number or the hotline number, um, getting them in contact with a counselor or with an organization, and then just let them go at their pace. If you're someone going through domestic violence, if you're experiencing this, or you don't know if you're experiencing domestic violence, I welcome you to watch this program and learn more about domestic violence. But I also want to tell you that we have resources and we have a hotline number that you can call. There are trained people to help you. And you can always ask. If you have a question, you can ask. You don't know who will be answering the phone. They don't know you. So there is no shame in asking any questions that you might have. Um, it's always important to talk to people, to find more information about something that might be affecting you or a loved one. And then once you're ready, you can meet with a counselor and you can create a program for yourself and learn more about domestic violence and ways that we can help you. I want to thank you for being here with us today. And if you have any more questions, you can always call this number. You can visit our website and answer. we can answer any questions you might have. Thank you for watching CAN TV. Headline 21, this program was brought to you for, from CAWC. My name is Atzimba Rodriguez, and thank you for having me with you today.